the Wright brothers Orville, August 19, 1871 to January 30, 1948, and Wilbur, April 16, 1867 to May 30, 1912, were two American aviation pioneers generally credited with inventing, building, and flying the world's first successful motor-operated airplane. They made the first controlled, sustained flight of a powered, heavier-than-air aircraft with the Wright Flyer on December 17, 1903, six kilometers south of Kitty Hawk, North Carolina. The brothers were also the first to invent aircraft controls that made fixed-wing powered flight possible. The 1904-1905, the Wright brothers developed their flying machine to make longer running, and more aerodynamic flights, with the Wright Flyer II, followed by the first truly practical fixed-wing aircraft, the Wright Flyer III. The brothers' breakthrough was their creation of a three-axis control system, which enabled the pilot to steer the aircraft effectively, and to maintain its equilibrium this method remains standard on fixed-wing aircraft of all kinds. From the beginning of their aeronautical work, Wilbur and Orville focused on developing a reliable method of pilot control, as the key to solving the flying problem. This approach differed significantly from other experimenters of the time, who put more emphasis on developing powerful engines, using a small home-built wind tunnel. The Wrights also collected more accurate data than any before, enabling them to design more efficient wings and propellers. Their first U.S. patent did not claim invention of a flying machine, but rather a system of aerodynamic control that manipulated a flying machine's surfaces. The brothers gained the mechanical skills essential to their success by working for years in their Dayton, Ohio based shop with printing presses, bicycles, motors, and other machinery. Their work with bicycles, in particular, influenced their belief that an unstable vehicle such as a flying machine could be controlled and balanced with practice. From 1900 until their first powered flights in late 1903, they conducted extensive glider tests that also developed their skills as pilots. Their shop employee Charlie Taylor became an important part of the team building their first airplane engine in close collaboration with the brothers. The Wright brothers' status as inventors of the airplane has been subject to counterclaims by various parties. Much controversy persists over the many competing claims of early aviators. Edward Roach, historian for the Dayton Aviation Heritage National Historical Park, argues that they were excellent self-taught engineers who could run a small company, but they did not have the business skills or temperament to dominate the growing aviation industry. Childhood Wilbur and Orville Wright were two of seven children, born to Milton Wright of English and Dutch ancestry, and Susan Catherine Kerner of German and Swiss ancestry. Milton Wright's mother, Catherine Reeder, was descended from the progenitor of the Vanderbilt family and the Huguenot Gano family of New Rochelle, New York. Wilbur was born near Millville, Indiana in 1867, Orville in Dayton, Ohio in 1871. The brothers never married. The other Wright siblings were Rocheline, Lauren, Catherine, and twins Otis and Ida, born 1870, died in infancy. The direct paternal ancestry goes back to a Samuel Wright who sailed to America and settled in Massachusetts in 1636. None of the Wright children had middle names instead, their father tried hard to give them distinctive first names, Wilbur was named for Wilbur Fisk and Orville for Orville Dewey, both clergymen that Milton Wright admired, they were Will and Orv to their friends and in Dayton, their neighbors knew them simply as the bishop's kids, or the bishop's boys. Because of their father's position as a bishop in the Church of the United Brethren in Christ, he traveled often and the Wrights frequently moved, 12 times before finally returning permanently to Dayton in 1884. In elementary school, Orville was given to mischief and was once expelled. In 1878 when the family lived in Cedar Rapids, Iowa, their father brought home a toy helicopter for his two younger sons. The device was based on an invention of French aeronautical pioneer Alphonse Pennod, made of paper, bamboo and cork with a rubber band to twirl its rotor. It was about one foot long. Wilbur and Orville played with it until it broke, and then built their own, in later years. They pointed to their experience with the toy as the spark of their interest in flying. Early Career and Research Both brothers attended high school, but did not receive diplomas the family's abrupt move in 1884 from Richmond, Indiana, to Dayton, Ohio, where the family had lived during the 1870s, prevented Wilbur from receiving his diploma, after finishing four years of high school. The diploma was awarded posthumously to Wilbur on April 16, 1994, which would have been his 127th birthday. In late 1885 or early 1886 Wilbur was struck in the face by a hockey stick, while playing an ice skating game with friends, resulting in the loss of his front teeth. He had been vigorous and athletic until then, and although his injuries did not appear especially severe, he became withdrawn. He had planned to attend Yale. Instead, he spent the next few years largely housebound, during this time he cared for his mother, who was terminally ill with tuberculosis, 
read extensively in his father's library, and ably assisted his father during times of controversy within the Brethren Church, but also expressed unease over his own lack of ambition. Orville dropped out of high school after his junior year to start a printing business in 1889. Having designed and built his own printing press with Wilbur's help, Wilbur joined the print shop, and in March the brothers launched a weekly newspaper, the West Side News. Subsequent issues listed Orville as publisher and Wilbur as editor on the masthead. In April 1890 they converted the paper to a daily, the evening item but it lasted only four months. They then focused on commercial printing. One of their clients was Orville's friend and classmate, Paul Lawrence Dunbar who rose to international acclaim as a groundbreaking African-American poet and writer. For a brief period the Wrights printed the Dayton Tattler, a weekly newspaper that Dunbar edited. Capitalizing on the national bicycle craze, spurred by the invention of the safety bicycle, and its substantial advantages over the penny-farthing design, in December 1892 the brothers opened a repair and sales shop, the Wright Cycle Exchange, later the Wright Cycle Company, and in 1896 began manufacturing their own brand. They used this endeavor to fund their growing interest in flight. In the early or mid-1890s they saw newspaper or magazine articles, and probably photographs of the dramatic glides by Otto Lilienthal in Germany. 1896 brought three important aeronautical events in May. Smithsonian Institution Secretary Samuel Langley successfully flew an unmanned steam-powered fixed-wing model aircraft. In mid-year, Chicago engineer and aviation authority Octave Chanute brought together several men, who tested various types of gliders over the sand dunes along the shore of Lake Michigan. In August, Lillingfell was killed in the plunge of his glider. These events lodged in the minds of the brothers, especially Lillingfell's death. The Wright brothers later cited his death as the point, when their serious interest in flight research began, Wilbur said. Lillingfell was without question the greatest of the precursors, and the world owes to him a great debt. In May 1899 Wilbur wrote a letter to the Smithsonian Institution requesting information and publications about aeronautics, drawing on the work of Sir George Cayley, Chanute Lillingfell, Leonardo da Vinci and Langley. They began their mechanical aeronautical experimentation that year. The Wright brothers always presented a unified image to the public, sharing equally in the credit for their invention. Biographers note that Wilbur took the initiative in 1899 to 1900, writing of my machine and my plans before Orville became deeply involved, when the first person singular became the plural we and are. Author James Tobin asserts, it is impossible to imagine Orville, bright as he was, supplying the driving force that started their work, and kept it going from the back room of a store in Ohio to conferences with capitalists, presidents and kings, well did that, he was the leader from the beginning to the end. Ideas about control Despite Lilienthal's fate, the brothers favored his strategy to practice gliding in order to master the art of control before attempting motor-driven flight. The death of British aeronaut Percy Pilcher in another hang gliding crash in October 1899 only reinforced their opinion that a reliable method of pilot control was the key to successful and safe flight. At the outset of their experiments they regarded control as the unsolved third part of the flying problem, they believed sufficiently promising knowledge of the other two issues, wings and engines already existed, the Wright brothers' plan thus differed sharply from more experienced practitioners of the day, notably Ader, Maxim, and Langley who all built powerful engines, attached them to airframes equipped with untested control devices, and expected to take to the air with no previous flying experience, although agreeing with Lilienthal's idea of practice. The Wright saw that his method of balance and control by shifting his body weight was inadequate, they were determined to find something better. On the basis of observation, Wilbur concluded that birds change the angle of the ends of their wings to make their bodies roll right or left. The brothers decided this would also be a good way for a flying machine to turn, to bank or lean into the turn just like a bird, and just like a person riding a bicycle, an experience with which they were thoroughly familiar. Equally important, they hoped this method would enable recovery when the wind tilted the machine to one side, lateral balance. They puzzled over how to achieve the same effect with man-made wings and eventually discovered wing warping when Wilbur idly twisted a long inner tube box at the bicycle shop. Other aeronautical investigators regarded flight as if it were not so different from surface locomotion, except the surface would be elevated. They thought in terms of a ship's rudder for steering, while the flying machine remained essentially level in the air as did a train or an automobile or a ship at the surface, the idea of deliberately leaning or rolling to one side seemed either undesirable or did not enter their thinking. Some of these other investigators, including Langley and Janute, sought the elusive ideal of inherent stability, believing the pilot of a flying machine would not be able to react quickly enough to wind disturbances to use mechanical controls effectively. The Wright brothers, on the other hand, wanted the pilot to have absolute control. 
For that reason, their early designs made no concessions toward built-in stability, such as dihedral wings. They deliberately designed their 1903 first powered flyer with anhedral, drooping, wings, which are inherently unstable, but less susceptible to upset by gusty crosswinds.